All right guys, so real quick, just wanna go over some tools that you're gonna need for this install. You're gonna need a six millimeter socket. It can be either 3 8 inch or quarter inch drive. It just really depends on what you have. It doesn't really matter. You're gonna need a T20 Torx bit. You're gonna need an extension for your socket. Obviously a wrench and one part that you may need if you don't have a Dremel is just a round file. It'll help uh, later when we go to cut the plastic component that we remove. You're gonna need some sort of PB blaster or something that can deteriorate Loctite in order to help loosen the threads on the factory set screw and also you may need some type of a torch for that. We'll get into that a little bit later. The last thing you're going to need to remove the factory set screw is a two and a half millimeter Allen key. It helps if it's on a T-handle. You do have to have one that's fairly long. So an Allen key that is like this type will not work for this. You have to have a longer Allen key. So either the standard Allen keys or something that's on a T-handle like this does a great job. So I figured for the sake of the video and saving time, I would just run through this really quickly with you guys just to show you how I did it. In a couple of minutes, quick little rundown. This project overall took me about an hour to do and it wasn't too difficult this way. It does not require removing the subframe or the seat. It does not require removing the exhaust. It's very simple. Let me show you. So all I did for this install was I loosened this hose clamp that's at the front of the throttle body and I also loosened this hose clamp that is at the rear side of the throttle body that goes into the air box. After those are loose all you have to do is take your throttle body and spin it counterclockwise, okay? That's the front of the bike. All you have to do is spin it counterclockwise so you can get to the screw on the other side. The screw on the other side I'm talking about, of course, is this one right here. You have to remove this in order to remove this plastic guard that shields your throttle cam. Once that plastic guard has been removed, you can then rotate the throttle body again clockwise so you can access this. Once the throttle body is rotated, you can actually get to the screw that you need to get to from this side, from the gear lever side of the bike. Once that screw is out, you will then install your idle screw, and then you have to move on to milling out the plastic piece that is on the other side that covers your throttle cam. Once you have properly milled out that plastic piece, you can then reinstall it, spin the throttle body back around to the correct orientation, and retighten these two hose clamps. After that, you are done. All that there is left to do is start up the bike adjust the idle, let it warm up, and take it out for a spin. Also, one last thing to note, the throttle cam is made out of plastic and you may burn it with the torch. Try not to burn it with the torch. Um, sometimes you don't have to use a torch and sometimes you do. Also, some of these bikes come with a Torx bit for the factory idle screw. This one was a two and a half millimeter Allen key, but some of the late model bikes are Torx. So please make sure you have the correct tool before you just go turning it and strip out your bike. The last little thing of note is this is your air bypass screw. If this bike was brand new to you or if it was used and you purchased it used, this air screw may need adjustment. I've seen different things online, but from what I've gathered, everybody screws it all the way in and then out about three quarters of a turn. Most people are pretty happy with that, but consult your owner's manual and also do your own research just to make sure that uh, you're doing it correctly on your bike. 
it would be a shame to run lean or rich on the track and blow an engine. Once that is set correctly, then you can make the final adjustments on your idle screw and you're good to go.